Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Philippine Pediatric Dental Society's Bata Muna String of Pearls webinar series. This evening, we are at the second to the last of our lecture series this month of September. This is Dr. Mia Go speaking, and we are kindly reminding everyone to please mute your audio and switch off your video as we listen to our lecturer. On behalf of the Philippine Pediatric Dental Society, Dr. Paul Abaya, our president and its officers, the technical and organizing committee, our partner, University of the Philippines College of Dentistry, through Dr. Jean Arevalo and Dean Danilo Magtano, our sponsors, Unilab and Pharmahex carriers of Orahex and Densitol. We thank you for joining us for this webinar series. We wish to remind everyone that we have two lecturers for this series and our lecturers are Dr. Francis de Malanta and Dr. Jan Harold Sia. We will reserve the question and answer portion for both lectures after the second lecture. Kindly post all your questions in the chat box anytime. To receive your e-certificates, kindly fill up the evaluation form and answer the questionnaire at the end of the seminar, which a link will be posted later. To proceed to our first lecture, entitled Ups and Downs of Down Syndrome, what to expect and how to prepare them for their dental visit, this topic will be talking about children with Down syndrome that are commonly observed to have intellectual disability and specific features that set them, set them apart from the special needs population. Though commonly amiable, these children have different abilities to cooperate. And Dr. Francis de Malanta will share practical techniques with dental practitioners to prepare our patients with Down syndrome for their dental visit. To know our lecturer better, Dr. Francis de Malanta is a board certified medical practitioner with specialization in developmental and behavioral pediatrics. He is currently the head of the section at both St. Luke's Medical Center, Quezon City and Global City. Having trained in a number of hospitals abroad, such as the Children's Hospital in Boston, New York Presbyterian Hospital, and Montefiore Medical Center, to name a few, Dr. Francis has been known to be a leading and internationally trained practitioner in childcare relations and advocacy. He is a proponent of mental health and psychosocial wellness for children and youth. To highlight a few of the long list of organizations Dr. Francis is affiliated with, he is currently a member of the Board of Trustees of the Philippine Pediatric Society and the Philippine Society for Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics. He is also the Vice President of the Philippine Association for the Gifted, the Medical Director of a Child's Dream Foundation in Baguio City, and ABS-CBN Capamilia Children's Village, and an active member of the Down Syndrome Association of the Philippines, the Aut Autism Society of the Philippines, and the Child Health in Life and Development Child Foundation Incorporated. Let us all please welcome our lecturer for, for tonight, Dr. Francis Xavier de Malanta. Thank you very much, Dr. Mia Go, for that kind introduction. Uh, please bear with me as this is the first time I'm doing uh, a share screen uh, without uh, the other side. Uh, thank you again for that kind invitation. Thank you for the kind invitation by the uh, pediatric dentists. Uh, I always look forward to this and I hope that I will be able to share a few things with you. I'd like to start my presentation with a prayer. Lord, let me be the change I want to see to do with strength and wisdom all that needs to be done and become the hope that I can be. Set me free from my fears and hesitations. Grant me courage and humility. Fill me with spirit to face the challenges 
and start the change I long to see. Even if I am not the light, I can be the spark in faith, service, and communion. Let us start the change we want to see, the change that begins in me. So I was asked to talk about ups and downs of Down syndrome, what to expect and how to prepare them for their dental visit. And I feel you know more than what I'm going to share you, uh, share to you this evening. But I'd like to uh, give an overview on the different oral and dental anomalies in children with Down syndrome and how to approach a child's first dental visit. As you all know, Down syndrome is a known condition associated with chromosomal abnormality on our 21st chromosome. That's why the World Down Syndrome Day is on March 21, that's 321, so it's easy for us to remember. And I've gone from uh, previously feeling sorry if a parent has a child with Down syndrome to now saying, congratulations, you have a delightful baby whom we're going to help out navigate this world at as best that we can. So we know that patients affected by this condition will present with generalized mental and growth deficiency and recognize craniofacial features. Awareness of the different anatopical soft tissue and dental anomalies, which are part of the typical developmental pattern in patients with Down syndrome, will help clinicians to anticipate the dental problems that might later occur. Here, we have common comorbidities to consider in the dental care of children with Down syndrome, such as the following. And apart from the dental uh, comorbidities, there would be seizure disorders, there would be cervical spine instability, hypothyroidism, and hopefully no cardiac conditions that might even require antibiotic prophylaxis. So it's the most common malformation syndrome and occurs in about one out of 600 or one out of 1,000 live births. We tell parents that this is a genetic accident. So there was nothing they did to have a child with Down syndrome. And by doing that, we are able and absolving them of any guilt that they caused it, it might make them less, how would I say, um, uh, indulgent with their children. So I tell them, just treat the child as typical as your other children, get mad at them if it needs to be, uh, if they need to be reprimanded, right? And we all know that their development will be much later than that of a regular child. So the following characteristics may distinguish a child with Down syndrome from the typical child. And there would be uh, problems in the sinuses and mouth which will contribute to your oral and dental problems. So they have short palpebral fissures, a flat mid face, a short nose, indistinct philtrum, thin upper lip, micrognathia, minor ear anomalies, low nasal bridge, and epicanthal folds. Some of them will have a simian crease, but it is not always present, and nor will it be an indication of Down syndrome for a child with a simian crease, um, because again, it might, it's just an associated feature. Now here we see the description uh, and the dental concerns of children with Down syndrome because of their craniofacial anomalies as I mentioned earlier, right, for the um, flat broad bridge of your nose, and then your lop ears or low set ears, your epicanthal folds, your short uh, web neck, okay, and the absence of your frontal sinuses, reduced maxillary sinuses. They have a big protruding tongue, open mouth, fissured lips, and the neck is broad and short, and even their chest would sometimes have a dorsal lumbar kyphosis. Among the oral anomalies would be your midfacial hypoplasia, which is the main orofacial characteristic in Down syndrome. They have smaller and sometimes absent frontal and maxillary sinuses, narrower nasal passages, and nasal septum deviation. Hence, there is a high incidence of malocclusion. Frequently, people with Down syndrome have smaller than average 
teeth and missing teeth. And it is also common for their teeth to have roots that are shorter than average. They also have different teeth morphology, which is the most common dental anomaly seen in children with Down syndrome, smaller peg-shaped rounded or bulbous and varied fissural patterns. And their incisors are simpler form with underdevelopment of your lateral marmelons. Now, the teeth of people with Down syndrome, both baby teeth and permanent teeth, may come in late compared to children without Down syndrome. And on the average, babies with Down syndrome get their first teeth at 12 to 24 months and may be as late as 24 months of age. The typical child gets their first teeth between 6 to 12 months. And it is also typical that child with Down syndrome may not get all 20 baby teeth until he or she is about four to five years of age. The front permanent teeth and permanent six-year-old molars may not erupt until eight to nine. And it is also common for the teeth of children with Down syndrome to erupt in a different order than the typical child. Various studies have shown a reduced incidence of caries in children and young adults with Down syndrome. And this may be due to the fact that many of these children are under supervision in regard to their diet in order to prevent their tendency to obesity. People with Down syndrome do get cavities, though. So brushing with fluoride toothpaste, flossing, as you would always advise your patients and limiting the amount and frequency of sugar and refined carbohydrates eaten will help to prevent the development of cavities. Um, now, there will be some who have low preva prevalence of dental caries, and this would be because of the living environment. They practice dietary and hygiene habits, increased buffering effect of the increased pH concentration of sodium chloride and bicarbonate of their oral secretions. Now, people with Down syndrome may have large tongues or they may have an average size tongue and a small upper jaw that will make their tongue too large for their mouth. And it is also common for them to have grooves and fissures on their tongues. Children with Down syndrome may have small teeth, which can cause spacing between the teeth, and they also tend to have a small upper jaw. And this may cause crowding of the teeth and result in the permanent teeth being impacted because there is no room in the mouth for them to come in. The small upper jaw may create a situation where the top teeth do not go over the bottom teeth the way they are meant to. Instead, the bottom teeth may be out further than the top in the back of the jaw, front of the jaw, or even both. And it is also common that the front teeth of people with Down syndrome do not touch. They might have an open bite, meaning a deficient maxillary growth and tongue thrust, resulting in lack of leap seal, producing proclination of your mandibular incisors. Children with Down syndrome are at an increased risk for gum disease. Even when they do not have a lot of plaque and tartar, they get periodontal disease more frequently than others because of their impaired immune system, which lacks some natural protections against the disease that people without Down syndrome have. Damaging oral habits, such as teeth grinding, which is the often uh, the complaint of many uh, parents, and clenching, food pouching, mouth breathing, and tongue thrusting can be a problem for people with developmental disabilities. So here is mentioning the periodontal disease, okay, which may result in increased risk of acute, acute infection and pain, which will lead to changes in behavior, refusal to eat, and some swallowing problems. So how would we now deal with challenges in the care for children with Down syndrome. As a dental professional, we need to be aware of their special challenges, which would include behavioral, physical, and cognitive areas. I would try to put down the strategies as follows. We listen actively. Um, this is something that we tell parents as well, that you ask and then listen. Don't ask and then just tell them what to do. We need to determine the patient's intellectual and functional abilities to explain 
the procedure at the level of the patient's understanding. So I was very happy that you had for your string of pearls, you've divided the children into three groups from the zero to five, six to 10, and the older kids. We also need to allot time to explain oral health issues, demonstrate the instruments to be used, use simple concrete instructions in some, may have short-term memory problems. And I would even suggest that they visit you, which I think many of you do, first without doing any dental procedure and then making them come for the next time. And uh, I'm really fascinated with all how your offices can be so engaging to them. We need to work hand in hand with the caregivers to find out techniques effective in managing their behavior. What works at home may work well for you in the clinic. We need to schedule the appointment early in the day so patients tend to be more alert and attentive. And let's involve the entire dental team to set the stage for a successful visit. We need less environmental distractions when providing oral care, plan a step-by-step -step evaluation, being consistent and rewarding cooperative behavior with compliments, catching them uh, probably behaving well and using immobilization techniques only when necessary. Behavior management is not usually a problem because they tend to be warm and well-behaved and aff affectionate. So, although some can be stubborn or uncooperative, we need to gain the trust of our patient to be able to ensure a successful visit. So as shown in your loop before we started, we need to care uh, for the periodontal disease and daily use of your chlorhexidine using spray bottle or toothbrush would be needed and encourage independence in daily oral hygiene. The brushing techniques of patients and providing recommendations for them, showing hands-on demonstration of brushing and flossing, involving caregivers in oral care, and never assume that they already know the basics. I think even us as adults, uh, my dentist must be so mad at me for not flossing pro properly. And I always like tell her, that's why I come to you so that you'll do it for me. Uh, for the first child's, uh, for the first visit of a child, what can we do? Let's familiarize yourself and your child with the practice. Ask the dentist if you can visit his clinic prior to the scheduled appointment. Give the child a chance to be familiar with the environment prior to any of the treatments. Now, children with Down syndrome usually have a routine, so request for an appointment during the time of the day when the child will be less tired. Schedules done earlier in the day are recommended to minimize time spent on waiting, therefore less chance of fatigue. Discuss all aspects of child's health with the dentist, include medications, provide the dentist contact information of all the child's healthcare providers to enable a coordination, coordinated um, thing for various providers for dental treatment plans if needed. Also, it's important there is good communication between the family and the dentist to allow the dentist to gain a better understanding of the child's needs. It's holistic as you all do. And let's address special concerns such as tactile or auditory sensitivities or aversions to increase the likelihood of a successful visit. Now teach child how to brush by demonstrating maybe using a doll, asking her to repeat, and parents should serve as the best example of good oral care. Remember, children will follow what you do, not what you say. So reminding them to brush on time, using images on the brushing process, can place them on the wall in the toilet so it's easy for them to remember. Uh, using a toothbrush with a fluoride toothpaste, they're saying that you can sing, just like when you're washing hands, I think, uh, probably now it, you would need about um, two happy birthdays, or as my mom would say, uh, one, uh, our father, Hail Mary, glory be. Uh, rinse with water multiple times for dry mouth, and then incorporate oral hygiene habits in a patient's daily routine schedule. Advice on using antibacterial mouthwash, examine with a consultant every three to four months and educate the parents on the consequences of poor oral hygiene, such as heart problems. Changing the oral practices and making a difference in the oral health for anyone with Down syndrome might be challenging at first. However, with consistency, determination, and teamwork from the clinician and caregivers, rewards could be invaluable. 
adapting these practices not only affects their oral health, but improvement on their quality of life as well. As they say, there is no health without oral health, and oral health is equivalent to overall health. Thank you very much, and good evening. Thank you very much, Dr. Francis de Malanta, for your concise yet full of details lecture. And your lecture tackled the oral conditions that we dentists would usually encounter with children with Down syndrome. Uh, later, after the second lecture by Dr. Sia, we would be relaying to you the questions by the audience. Kindly stay with us if you can. Thank you, Dr. Francis. Before we proceed with our second lecturer, we would like to award the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Francis de Malanta in grateful recognition of his participation as our guest lecturer and for sharing his expertise and knowledge through the topic, Ups and Downs of Down Syndrome, What to Expect and How to Prepare Them for Their Dental Visit. Given this day of 25th day of September, 2020, during the Philippine Pediatric Dental Society String of Pearls webinar series, through a collaboration by, uh, by PPDSI with the UP College of Dentistry. This certificate is acknowledged and signed by the president of PPDSI, Dr. Paul Abaya, our awards committee chair, Dr. Rowena Castro, the scientific committee chair of PPDSI, Dr. Hazel Marie Talas Unico, and the dean of the UP College of Dentistry, Dean Danilo Magtanong, and the coordinator for continuing education from the UP College of Dentistry, Dr. Jean Arevalo. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yes, yeah, thank you, Dr. Francis. And thank we will relay the questions to you later. Thank you. Now to proceed to our second lecture. Our second lecture will be discussing about effective communication techniques for special needs children and their families, families, a dentist guide. Most often communicating and teaching correct dental care to special needs children and their families can be quite challenging, especially for us dentists. And understanding the cognitive development is key in developing this task of communication. Specific strategies will be discussed by Dr. Sia to guide dentists in their clinical work and their management. To further know our lecturer for, the, for this evening, Dr. Jan Harold Sia is a board certifi certified developmental behavioral ped pediatrician by the American Board of Pediatrics and the Philippine Society for Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics. Dr. Jan Harold Sia underwent residency for pediatrics at the State University of New York, Health Science Center at Brooklyn, United States of America, and then he continued for his fellowship training in developmental behavioral pediatrics at the Yale School of Medicine. He has given numerous lectures on children with special health care needs, including those on topics regarding adoption and foster care. Dr. Jan has also co-authored several studies recognized by the international journals and by the Centers for Disease Control. Currently, Dr. Jan attends to his patients at the following hospitals, such as the Makati Medical Center, Manila Doctors Hospital, and the Medical City South Luzon. Dr. Jan Harold Sia is a loving husband and a proud father of two. So let us please welcome our second lecturer, Dr. Jan Harold Sia. Anyway, so I would like to repeat my thanks <laughs> to the organizing committee. Uh, and also to Francis, because he made my work easier. You know, there's a lot of overlap in our lecture. Uh, but as I was saying a while ago, repetition is good so that um, at least the dentists in our, in our um, program today will remember uh, how they will communicate and uh, how they will address the needs of these um, children. So in any case, my topic for tonight is on effective communication with special needs children and their families, a dentist's guide. Okay. So I have uh, no disclosure. So these are our objectives. Hopefully, um, at the end of my talk, we hope to answer these questions. Who are the special needs children with communication barriers? 
what are the barriers or challenges to effective communication with special needs children and their families, and what strategies or techniques can be used to effectively communicate with special needs children and their families. Okay, so children with special health care needs, oh, they present a unique set of concerns for oral health for several reasons. So first one is they are prone to developing caries. They may be at higher risk um, for complications or systemic infections um, from oral diseases. And um, they have difficulty in understanding and assuming responsibility for preventive oral health. They may also require more help with their oral self-care routines than typically developing children. Okay, um, so who are these? Okay. okay, so who are the children um, with special health care needs with communication problems? Um, as mentioned by Dr. Francis a while ago, uh, you know, there, are, there are representative groups, okay? And first one of them are those children with intellectual disability. Um, the conditions that I'm going to present today are certainly not exhaustive. They are examples, okay? Um, and there are more to, uh, um, to children with special health care needs. So who are the children with intellectual disability or ID? So the old term for this one is mental retardation. Um, ID is, uh, is uh, characterized by deficits in general, in general mental abilities and impairments in daily functioning compared to same age peers. They may have some academic skills um, at the level of the early to late elementary at best. Okay. The next group uh, are the children with autism spectrum disorder or ASD. So ASD is characterized by impairments in reciprocal social communication and social interaction and the presence of restricted um, repetitive patterns of behavior, interests, or activities. Now, autism spectrum disorder is often associated with intellectual disability. Okay. The next group uh, are those children with language disorder. So language disorder is characterized by difficulties in the acquisition and use of language. There are deficits in the comprehension or production of vocabulary, sentence structure, and discourse. However, language disorder is not associated with intellectual disability. The other groups of children with communication problems, with special healthcare needs with communication problems include those with visual and hearing impaired, those with motor disabilities, uh, and those with craniofacial anomalies. The last two groups, motor disabilities and craniofacial anomalies, are often associated with intellectual disability as well. Okay. So let's talk about now the potential barriers for communication. Okay. So first, uh, potential barrier is the cognitive skill of the child. Okay. And the parents do sometimes. You know? So maybe you've uh, um, experienced this in your own practices. Um, the next one is language, the language barrier itself, meaning the differences in dialects. Okay. Um, so it, it's, it is really suggested for dentists to use simple language and don't assume that everybody speaks and understands English fluently. Okay. Um, it is also recommended that we avoid uh, medical, the use of medical jargon. The next barrier is the language skills itself, um, as I've described earlier. Now, differences in oral health goals. So this is another important potential barriers because so it's important for dentists to know, um, for, uh, to know immediately what are the family's goals for the child's oral health. Okay. Um, the next barrier is the child's behavior and self-regulation. So during the visit, if the child is very disruptive, it can potentially disrupt the conversation with the parents about uh, the oral health care of the child. So it is important that uh, the child is, uh, uh, it is important to calm the child first before the dentist proceed with the discussion. Okay. The next one is the limited time during visits. Okay, so I'm sure you're all very busy dentists. And uh, I think it's important to put it, to put it out there that time is really an, uh, a luxury okay, in all um, aspects. So it's important that you plan ahead and you may need to schedule a visit just for educating the parents. Okay. 
So the key to the nuts and bolts of communicating with all children, is, including children with special needs, is guided the understanding the child's cognitive development theorized by Piaget. So I will just run through this. Okay? So the first group, the first age group is the zero to two years old, um, uh, which is the infancy to the toddler years. And this is uh, characterized by the sensory motor stage. So children at this age learn through direct sensations and motor actions. And they, the, they master concepts such as object permanence, causality, spatial relationships, and use of instruments. The next group is the three to six-year-old group, the preschool years, characterized as the pre-operational stage. So the mental processes are governed by the child's own perceptions and linkage to events. Uh, so there is no separation of fantasy, which is their internal reality, and the external reality. They have a sense of animism, magical thinking, egocentrism, and transductive reasoning. So animism means that objects have life, okay? And egocentrism centrism, uh, means that the child's understanding of the world is based on their perspective only. So they think that how they think is actually how all others think. So that is egocentrism. And then uh, transductive reasoning, on the other hand, means that um, children assume a causal link or a permanent association when two events are experienced in close proximity. Okay. The next stage is uh, the six to 11 year old group. So the middle childhood, uh, which is the concrete operational stage. Um, here, children can reason through real and mental actions on real objects. They can reason with a stable rule system. They can understand some patterns and they can see another person's perspective. Okay. And the last stage is the formal operation stage for 12 years old and older, okay? Here, um, adolescents and you know, young adults and adults can reason about ideas, impossibilities, and probabilities. They have mastery of abstract concepts. Um, they exhibit inductive reasoning and complex deductive reasoning. Okay. So, so why is communication important in dentistry, okay? Well, just like in any other health-related field, it has been documented consistently in the last five decades that the doctor-patient relationship and communication are the strongest predictors of the outcome of a health visit. Okay. So let's start off first with communicating with the parents. Okay. So this one, Dr. Francis mentioned a while ago, active listening. Okay. So you need to let the parents know that you are listening. This is a very basic skill. Okay, and what are the body languages that convey a listening attitude? So this would include, oh, there you go. So sitting down, looking at the parent at eye level, leaning forward and showing interest to what the parents have to say and showing appropriate concern. Okay, uh, and then you should also respond appropriately, oops, to to parental affect or emotional tone. So how the parents are feeling as they are conveying to you their concerns or just you know, for, for any uh, sharing of experiences for that matter. Okay. Um, so an example with this uh, would be you know, if, 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 uh, if a parent tells you, you know, ang hirap talagang sipilyuhin nung, nung ngipin ng anak ko, you can say na, ako ang hirap pala talaga para sa inyo, pagod na pagod siguro kayo. Um, at nakakalungkot siguro para sa inyo. So that is really responding to the tone. So looking at how they are feeling, uh, the, emotion, uh, the emotional content. The next one is dentists should facilitate and guide the dialogue. Okay? You do not dominate the conversation. Okay? You use open-ended, non-judgmental questions. So for example, if you want to know uh, how they brush their teeth, um, the way uh, um, a suggested question would be, tell me how you care for his teeth rather than do you brush his teeth? Kasi pag yes ang sagot, edi okay, pero pag no, di ba parang ang sama-sama naman ng magulang. Okay. Elicit parents' concerns, goals, and expectations early in the visit. So this is what I was um, telling a while ago. Um, most of the time, you know, this uh, conversation on concerns and expectations may reveal unrealistic expectations from the parents. Okay. However, sometimes it may make the clinician's job easy if reassurance is all that is needed. And thus, it will help direct your conversation with the parents. Okay. Uh, 
use common courtesy. Okay, so what is this? So greetings, diba? introducing yourself, introduction. Um, now use the names of the family members of, as how they introduce themselves. So this is um, somehow a pet peeve of mine. No? So I mean, not just for medical doctors, pero siguro for any healthcare professional, um, when you, you know, these healthcare workers, they call the parents, mommy and daddy. Mommy, upo po kayo dito, o daddy, kamusta pong anak ninyo? But if you think about it, the healthcare professional is not a child of the parent. So it's really inappropriate for the healthcare professional to call this a very personal and endearing uh, name, but to the parent. So it's better if you, if the parents did that introduce themselves, then just use common courtesy. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. C. Right? Unless they introduce themselves, hi, Doc, ako po si Harold. Then you can use the family member's uh, first name. Okay. Uh, redirecting discussion. I'm sure you have experienced um, uh, patients or the parents of patients wherein they have a lot of stories to tell. And so, you know, the direction of discussion goes wayward. So, ito, you know, it's, a, it's the job of the dentist to really redirect the discussion, you know, uh, respectfully. You know, may suave naman, di ba? There's a, there's a natural pause naman in the, uh, in the discussion. Eh. So, you just have to be astute with that natural pause from the parent talking. And then, you know, immediately say na, oh, sige po, let's, let's go back to the original topic on, you know, brushing teeth, etc. And then finally, you should make closure and the agenda setting explicit. So at the end of the visit, you have to review, okay, this is what we did today, this is what our plan, this is what we should do, and then I'll see you, you know, on so-and-so. Para clear yung plan. So sabi ni Dr. Francis, diba, make a treatment plan. So what are some of the communication or teaching strategies? Telling, okay, so this is really explaining, providing information, and giving direction. And then the next one is showing. So this is demonstrating an action, maybe using a 3D model, drawing and showing pictures. Okay? And then providing resources. So it's another strategy. So this, you know, practically providing handouts, videos, websites. You know, I'm sure some dental clinics are very savvy. Diba meron sila mga videos na na habang naghihintay while the parents are waiting, pinapakita yung... Uh, uh, ano yung mga kailangan gawin, how to care for the child's teeth. Okay. So the next slide, ito, um, well, it's, it's clear naman. I'm sure you all know this. So showing the parent what is, you know, uh, uh, rice grain size toothpaste, a pea size toothpaste. Some dentist, at least for my child's dentist, um, he described, ay, ano ba to? He described it as four bristles of toothpaste. Okay. So um, it's really important, again, so it's, Merong oral education, so naririnig ng bata at ng pamilya, and then they also see it. Okay. Another strategy is uh, questioning. Diba? So, however, you should ask questions one at a time and allow time to answer. Usually mga five to seconds. Diba? Uh, practicing and return demonstration. This might be a little bit uh, difficult, no? Uh, but again, if you pag experiential kasi ang learning, it's much easier for the parents to learn. Okay. And then, oops. Giving constructive feedback. Um, so how you do this is restating and clarifying. So if a parent, uh, you know, tells you something, kung anong ginagawa niya, this really just rephrasing, parang you will just echo kung anong sinabi niya. And also, yung clarifying statements, uh, it tells the parent that you are really listening to what they have to say. So let's talk about now. Okay, here. Communicating now with children's special health care needs. So before the visit, I suggest you obtain information. You obtain information about the child. So information about communication and behavioral patterns, the level of understanding. Uh, and then maybe you should schedule a separate parent or caregiver appointment just to talk about the child. You know? At least in my practice, and I'm sure maybe with Dr. Francis as well, uh, there are many times where we schedule an appointment just for the parents. Because it, anyway, it, it will, you, will, you will have the parents' attention 100%. Diba? Hindi sila distracted, hindi nila iniisip how the child is doing, baka nakakasira na ng kung ano. No? So at least if you have the parents' 100% attention, 
you'll be uh, sure na you know that the parent would understand what you have to say at ikaw ren diba you will understand you have a full understanding of their concerns let's talk about what are the things you should avoid first when communicating with children with special needs so avoid threatening okay pag hindi mo to ginawa you know i whatever <laughs> so hindi mo pag hindi ka na upo diyan ganito mangyayari so hindi hindi maganda yun di ba so um, and number two, using false situational outcomes so ano sabihin nito if i don't clean your teeth example lang ha if i don't clean your teeth you will not eat cake anymore i mean of course di ba you cannot assure that you cannot be you cannot guarantee that to the child di ba on third one avoid using fantasy as a rationale for the visitor procedure uh, so naisip ko lang dito is yung tooth fairy pero wala naman tooth fairy sa Pilipinas iba so example diba this is what the tooth fairy wants for your teeth parang eh diba para you're just feeding into the fantasy na hindi naman and then lastly avoid putting the child on the spot so what is an example of this yung sasabihin mo yung bata hindi ba matapang ka naman aren't you brave boys don't cry so, ano it, uh, it minimizes their own thoughts and feelings kapag gaganon. So, it's really not going to be a very good communication relationship uh, when you use at least these four no-no statements. So, what should you do? Ito. Again, reiterating what Dr. Francis said, you build trust with the child. You start with a getting to know me dental visit. So, you nothing to do. Talagang just get to know the child. Diba? So, in in our practice as dev peace, you know, we always talk about uh, yung what interests a child. So, ito na yung using icebreakers. I I observe what the child is wearing. Diba? Ano yung shirt? Kung babae, meron ba siyang parang uh, naka-ponytail, clips? Or do they did they bring uh, a, a toy? Any object. And then I start the conversation using those things that I observe. So, for example, naka-Superman shirt. Oh, you know, I also have a Superman shirt. I really like Superman. So, you know, icebreaker nga. And then, uh, you use casual conversation. So, parang hindi doctor visit. Parang, you know, just in the park. And then you meet a friend and then strike a conversation. So, that is one way of building trust um, with these children. So, you know, as you can see, the this will also work for typically developing children na, you know, preschool years. Okay. Use simple and concrete language, as mentioned earlier. Um, so remember the cognitive level at best of intellectually disabled patients uh, is in the early to late elementary years. So very concrete language talaga. So for example, you say, first you will sit on this special chair, then you will open your mouth, then I will count your teeth, etc., etc. So para they, they can predict what's going to happen next. Okay. Uh, use words according to developmental level. Okay, I think this is... Uh, um, uh, repeated na. Repeat what you said and then repeat it again and then say it again. So, pero syempre, there, there are pauses in between just to make sure na talaga naintindihan ng bata. Okay? Take your time, speak slowly and calmly. Okay? So that, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll know na talaga naintindihan ng bata and you only speak when you actually have the child's attention. Not when during the time na parang uh, ano ka, parang uh, busy busy siya sa kung ano man. Okay. Give one direction or instruction at a time. So, yung, the example I gave a while ago, diba? first you sit here on this chair. Then you wait for the child to do it. And then open your mouth. And then you do that. And then next, so ganun yun. Give uh, an opportunity for the child to follow. And then for children who can, you know, ask them to repeat what you said. And give enough time to respond as well. Oh. Next one, so tell and show the child if you understood him or her. So again, uh, uh, affirmation right? that, um, that the child's thoughts and uh, ideas are important to you because they, they are a partner eh, in, in the care of their own uh, teeth. Um, and the next one, so uh, here, the tell, show, and do. So take pa ulit ulit ito, diba? And then narrate all of your actions. So narration is really, you know, literally narrate. So as you're doing it, you tell the child what you're doing. So 
first, you know, I'm going to turn on the lights. It's going to be a little bit bright so you can close your eyes. And then I will count your teeth like this. One, two, three. And then, you know, I'll spray this one. And then you will rinse your mouth in this, you know, small bowl. So, important talaga. It's, it's very important for children with special health care needs to know what's going on. And then show and demonstrate. Oops. Okay, show and demonstrate how the equipment works before using. So again, uh, emphasizing what my uh, you know good friend Francis said a while ago. So, ako personal experience, parang na natuwa ako na oh, nga, no, it was a good idea. So, my child's dentist, ang ginamit niya yung brush, ibrinas mo na niya do sa kuku ng anak ko. Habi ko oh, nga, no? parang di ba yun yung feeling. Tapos magbibilang muna doon sa fingertips and then lalapit, magbibilang sa my elbow and then magbibilang sa my shoulder. So, my child is typically developing. Eh. So, uh, pero di ba, ang, ang ganda ng effect eh, na even for typically developing children, this is very, very useful. Uh, what more for children with special needs? Okay. And then, use visuals, pictures, and picture schedules. So, uh, the visuals, so ito yung showing what is expected behavior, what is appropriate behavior in a dentist's clinic. Um, you can also use the visuals or pictures for uh, yung dental care. I think Francis showed this a while ago. And also as a point of reward system. So ito naman in partnership with the parents. Na if, you know, if, if the child you know, shows his behavior, he gets a one point. And then for this behavior, again, another point. And then at the very end, you know, you add up yung points. And then there's a, there's a reward afterwards. Siyempre yung reward, ibibigay talaga dapat ng parents. But you as a dentist can give your own reward then. Okay. Pero mas effective kasi yung reward from parents. Eh. And then, uh, use a timer. Okay. So para, uh, kasi they may they may not have a sense of time na ano ba ang 8 o'clock, ano ba ang ganito, 9 o'clock, 30 minutes. So, use a visual timer. No, meron akong papakita dito mamaya. Okay. Here. So, uh, again, just an example of the uh, picture schedules or visual supports. You know, you can, you can look this up online. Maraming free na ganito. Another example. So, ito, nakalagay pa, di ba? There's the uh, the uh, just the, the verbal component. The dentist will ask you to open your your mouth. Pero meron din yung mga visual support describing what's typewritten. The dental office vocabulary. Okay, and then this is the timer I was talking about. So this is a visual timer, visual and audible timer. So the red uh, the red part. Ito you can move that eh. So halimbawa is a forty five minute procedure. So you you move the the uh, just so the hand to the 45 minute mark and then maka count down yan and as the uh, time as the time goes down mawawala din yung yung red uh, panel na yan and then when time is time when time is up meron din magkakaroon ng uh, timer okay okay so be consistent in all appointments okay so uh, and this includes consistency in time the day the staff and the room okay so, para you know, familiarity talaga helps in calming a you know uh, a child with special healthcare needs, especially those with autism. Okay, and then use labeled praising and attention. So, what is labeled praising? Ito yung, it's not enough that we say good job. We have to really say what we are praising. For example, good job for sitting quietly on the special chair. Okay, you were very quiet. I really like that. Oh, wow, you open your mouth really well. Awesome job. So, mga ganong class, talagang, you have to be concrete. You have to tell. Ano yung nagugustahan mo? Kasi otherwise, children will not know what are you, what do you mean by good job? Diba? Be attentive to the child's behaviors, vocalizations, and facial expressions. No matter how trivial they may seem. Okay? Uh, kasi, this, this may be the child's way of communicating to you whatever he is feeling. Diba? So, Kung halimbawa, nag-misbehavior na siya or gusto niya umalis, baka talaga natatakot. So, ganun din sa vocalizations, any form of whining or grunting. Facial expressions. Kung talagang uh, makikita mo rin naman doon, kung okay lang ba. Yan. So, and then, after observing those things, you acknowledge the child's feelings and reassure as necessary. So, there are times kasi na it's hard to, I mean, we can't read minds, di ba? So, you can only interpret. So, you can say, Okay, you must be very scared right now. 
and then you can assure you know I will uh, I will do it as quickly as possible and as um to as uh to yung yung magaan kamay and then it will be all done okay and then afterwards you praise well thank you very much na talagang you were able to sit there quietly for or five minutes so then okay. and then after you after making sure na that child is uh, not in pain or the, um, or having discomfort, you can ignore the other minor misbehaviors na. No? Kasi the minor ones, if you ignore them, mawawala din naman yan eh. Yung tinatawag na behavioral extinction. Okay? But certainly, you cannot ignore yung mga medyo unsafe behaviors. Okay? Now, for the visually impaired, of course, and it's really recommended that you use tactile feel feedback as well. And then for the hearing impaired oops. for the hearing impaired you know if the child uses sign language you ask help from the parent or an interpreter you know, usually it's a united states interpreter pero mali natin baka dito meron na rin. Uh, and then keep background noise to a minimum and then remove your mask or use a portable speaker diba? now since covid ngayon, diba, we're all required to wear to wear a mask a face shield it's really, I really suggest no, that you put a big picture no, yung talagang madali makita in the clinic, in the cubicle, para alam nila. So, kasi it, it, um, it raises fear. Diba? It decreases the fear from the child. No, who is this you know, person wearing a mask? You can only see the eyes you know, with bushy eyebrows. <laughs> who knows? So, uh, para mawala yung takot ng konti at yung anxiety. And for those children with alternative and augmentative communication system, so what are these, uh, especially those who are nonverbal or minimally verbal, uh, I really recommend that you request the parent or require the parent that they bring this uh, communication system. So it's going to be your way or the child's way of communicating uh, with the dentist and the, all the adults in the clinic. So this is an example of all the augmentative communication systems starting from the low-tech devices on the left lower corner. So there are sticker boards, communication boards, up to the high-tech versions on the right upper corner. So there are text-to-speech devices and applications, sometimes eye-gaze devices. Okay. So in summary, you know, we discuss who are these special needs having communication barriers. You know, we discuss the barriers and challenges effective communication with special needs children and their families and you know i share with you some specific techniques and strategies that you can use to effectively communicate with this special population uh, okay so these are my resources so mcoralhealth.org brightfutures.aap.org and again the printable charts which are all over the internet I'm sure you can be resourceful in that one okay so we can do it, diba? So with that, I hope that more of you will take action in meeting the oral health needs of children with special health care needs and say we can do it, diba? Um, because all children deserve a smile on their faces and happiness in their lives. So thank you very much for your attention. Oh, thank you for your you lecture. For it was indeed very practical. You gave practical examples, even dialogues and things that Special, both the specialist and the general practitioner can do in their practice when they are about to manage a child with communication challenges. And before we proceed to our question and answer portion for both you and Dr. Dimalanta, we wish to award your certificate of appreciation awarded to you by the Philippine Pediatric Dental Society and the University of the Philippines Manila College of Dentistry. This electronic certificate is awarded to Dr. Jan Harold Sia in grateful recognition of his participation as a guest lecturer and for sharing his expertise and knowledge through the topic, Effective Communication with Special Needs Children and Their Families, a Dentist Guide. Given this day of September 25, 2020, during the Philippine Pediatric Dental Society String of Pearls webinar series. This certificate is signed by Dr. Paul Abaya, PPDSI President, Dr. Rowena Castro, the Awards Committee Chair, Dr. Hazel Sunico, the Scientific Committee, Committee Chair, and representatives from the UP College of Dentistry, its Dean, Dr. Dean Mag Danilo Magtanong, and the Coordinator for Continuing Education, Dr. Jean Arevalo. Thank you very much, Dr. Jan Sia. Dr. Sia and Dr. Dimalanta, are, are we ready for the question and answer? Yes. yes. Uh, can I just greet Harold because it was his birthday? 
And, uh, di ba, hindi kahit, nalagpas. <laughs> Siyempre, kailangan kasi di ka sumagot nung bumati ako happy birthday, John Harold Sia, who's a loving husband. Yun. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Francis. <laughs> Okay. Dr. Sia, happy birthday in behalf of the Philippine Pediatric Dental Society. Oh, na ako sa Dr. Di Malanda. Ah, akala ko hindi ko alam eh. Okay. <laughs> Ihuhuli ko po sana baka maligyan. Ah, uh, okay. So, sinabi pa niya sa inyo na birthday niya? Of course not. <laughs> I talk <to> him. <laughs> Stop him, sige. Ang dami na gano. Okay. Opo, we are organizing kasi. All right. So, let us prepare for for our question and answer portion. Now, we have a few questions for both of you and for each of you individually. Okay. For Dr. Dimalanta, uh, for those children with Down syndrome, is there a spectrum of learning disability or those with Down syndrome are just typically uh, affected with mild learning disabilities and they are able to comprehend well with regards to language, and social interaction skills? Uh, well, as you said already, it's a spectrum. So you can have those who have um, cognitive deficits and Down syndrome, which Harold mentioned earlier, we don't say mental retardation anymore, but intellectual disability. And it can be from one that's low functioning to a high functioning one. I've had patients uh, who completed high school well, not because the mom owned the school, but then uh, she also runs marathons and is gainfully employed. So you have that wide range of children with intellectual delays. All right. What about their social interaction skills? You mentioned earlier that there, there are those with Down syndrome who may tend to be uncooperative. Do they also have a tendency to, you know, uh, like self-mutilating behavior or may become aggressive when they, when they enter adolescent stage? Uh, most definitely. And, and that's because it also happens to children who, who are, are typical. Um, not preparing them for something like a big major procedure, like going to the dentist, will really scare any child. I was scared of my dentist ever since. And she just held, held me but parang by the head. And that's why I'm traumatized that every time I come to the dentist, I, I, I really... No, I know I, I stiffen up and I keep telling them please put me to sleep because of my very traumatic experience so I guess it's the same thing for them I don't know if Harold had a good experience with his dentist but I was really parang traumatized majorly and I can't uh, what do you call this uh, take the sound of that drill once it goes vroom, I know it's gonna come in and gonna hurt me so sensory issues, So, in fact, I would like first and foremost to commend all of you. There's, I saw about 285 of you who are working with special needs children. Lalo na in COVID. Can you imagine? You're wearing your entire outfit and then you have to go through this, uh, all these other things that you have to use just to get into the mouths of these children. And you're the one... I don't think uh, none of you will not be scared right? now with this. But so you are supposed to be heroes for having to continue to do all of this. Come in, Harold, face to face. face to face, I'm still online and I'm scared. I like for face to face. And I'm going to go back to my clinic probably in January already because I just cannot uh, risk being reinfected, so to speak. So because of that, maybe we should refer you to Dr. Paul Abaya for your dental appointment. <laughs> All right. Uh, PSD. <laughs> peja ko, peja. All right. Uh, this is a shout out to Dr. Paul Abaya. Can you set an appointment with Dr. Dimalanta? <laughs> home service. Yes, home service po. Uh, we have a question for Dr. Sia from our audience. Uh, for... Children with maintenance medications, is it necessary to obtain a clearance from a pediatrician prior to a dental procedure? Maybe he's asking particularly those dental procedures that might, in, that might be invasive or involve uh, bleeding maybe or uh, sedation probably. I think that really depends on the maintenance medication. Kasi, for example, maintenance medication, asthma. Eh, kung, if there's no clear cut or very um, uh, significant drug-to-drug -drug interaction, 
then you probably don't need uh, pediatric clearance. I think the only cases, ito, medyo gen pits na ito, no, hindi ako makada na no, gen pits na eh. Really for those na, uh, if, if, if the risk of having um, ito, uh, carditis eh, di ba yung rheumatic, uh, ay, not rheumatic, pero yung from, from uh, invasive procedures nga tapos infection. So I think yun yung naisip ko. Pero really, it really, it depends on the medication. Yes, uh, I, I don't think... know. Francis maybe can add up to, uh, can add something to that. No, the, I think sometimes even when they ask us for a clearance, but it's, usually you have a form that you send us. I think it's easier when you do that for us. And all you want to find out, I think, would be like Harold mentioned, the bleeding tendency, mm -hmm. right? So if they're on on any medication that will. Uh, compromise the dental care that you're giving, then I guess it has to be done. But we work in tandem, right? Sometimes I tell them I don't need to do, do the CBC x-ray, urinalysis for a dental procedure. So I would trust your instinct when you would want to refer to us as general peds to give that clearance. Yes. Uh, as, as a member of QPDS, I think I, think I agree with your answers that a clearance from a pediatrician really depends on what maintenance medications the patient is on and what kind of invasive procedures will be yeah. is planned. Yes. And then what about if the child is already apprehensive when visiting the dentist due to sensory issues or association of fear with the dentist, what strategy can we do to remedy this and you know to rebuild trust with the child? I think especially if the trauma came from a previous dental procedure, how can we build trust again? It will take a long time. Oh, you want to answer muna, Francis? <laughs> trust issue, parang si Harold, oh, di ba? <laughs> Ang kailangan, I think, is again, before the child comes, you have to win them already. And, and um, syempre, all these children, they were very short ang attention span nila. So they need you to be really focused with them. Parang the faster you deal with them, the easier. Have a firm voice, di ba, na calm. At saka marami naman sa inyo, may TV na dun sa top. So that will really make this child uh, distracted from having to uh, do the procedure. However, mahirap kasi pag merong underlying fear to begin with. Like, I'm I'm more than 50 <laughs> and I'm still scared of my dentist so I don't even know how to get over that fear. Uh, more so pa yung special needs children. So uh, I think it's it's more of a, a technique that you have to learn that all of you know because you're all pediatric dentists. And like I said, hats off to you. For an adult, ang hirap hawakan, mga, lalo na child, lalo na special child. So you, I, I consider you my heroes. You know what I ang masabi ko dyan, no? Kasi the question, di ba, if un, has to undergo tooth extractions, but really apprehensive. I'm sure yung mga bata na may special health care needs, ito, parents will not bring them for like a routine dental visit. Uh, probably just because of the fact that they have special needs. At siguro, they will only uh, bring their children to, to your clinic pag meron ng probleme. And most of the time, they are apprehensive because something is, you know, irritable, painful sa mouth nila. So, uh, kapag ka ganoon, no more than the fear, I think it's really removing, you know, the irritante. At kapag ka ganon, I think there's there's no way but to really sedate the child. Kasi, unless siguro na sabihin natin, ano, na very mild intellectual disability, tapos verbal naman, tapos kung mabibigyan mo naman ng quantum pain medication, kung makakausap ka na maayos, maybe, pwede pa siguro na you know, clinic, tapos um, hindi kailangan sedate. Pero most of the time talaga ho, you may need to really uh, call your anesthesiologist friend <laughs> to really sedate that child, or conscious sedation. Yes. Um, most often, since uh, patients come in with a complaint already, we are forced to manage the complaints first, the pain, prior to building trust with the child. Uh, kung baga, uh, we build trust with the child pagkatapos na natin ayusin yung problema. Yeah, sometimes talagang ganun nang nangyayari. Yeah. Now, what about uh, uh, earlier, uh, Dr. Sia mentioned that we prefer to use specific names for family members. Uh, tinamaan po ako personally because I tend to call the parents as mommy or daddy. I admit that <laughs> I often call them that way. 
So, uh, how about, is it appropriate if we call them uh, a mommy and then their name, like mommy cat or daddy Jan, is that all right? Po? Is it acceptable? You know, it, it really depends. So, say, you think about it. For example, you're the mother and then this dentist calls you mommy Mia. Diba? Ako, personally, you know, I, I reserve that very endearing uh, statement or name. To my children. Pero Tito Doc, Tito oh, Doc, pwede ka. Tito Doc, pwede pa siguro, di ba? Oh, pero dapat... Pero yung mommy and daddy, I think that is a very specific title eh. That is reserved mm-hmm. to, you know, very special people. <laughs> uh, so, yun lang. Kasi sometimes kasi if you use um, yung mga mommy, daddy, or mama, papa, it gives the impression. Ito, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from experience naman no, as a parent. It gives the impression kasi na, ay, hindi mo kilala, no? Parang you... you Eh, parang my name is really not important to you. Now, that's me. Kasi, di ba, dalped ako, professional ko, this is what I do in my work. Pero what if, you know, for other parents who are, you know, um, not medical professionals or mental health professionals, you don't know if it's really uh, bothering them or, you know, it, it's uh, they mind it. So, I think professionally talaga, di ba? Which, let's call them formally by their names, uh, Mr. and Mrs. C. Yeah, di ba? Kung nagsabi sila, Doc, Harold, alam po, okay lang. Ah, sige po, uh, Sir Harold. Pwede pa yung Sir. Sir Harold, ma'am, di ba? Lara na sa culture natin, yung... Uh, Your Royal Highness. Harold. <laughs> the seniority, the, the respect. So, um, uh, unless they give you permission, you, no, you can explicitly ask them, oh, okay lang po ba, tawagin ko po kayong Mami, you know, Mami Jane, di ba? Or Daddy Harold. Kung sinabi na lang, oo, Mommy Jane, uh, you Tarzan. Okay. <laughs> Kaya ganun. So it's okay to ask permission. Actually, it's a lot better nga to ask permission. How do you want to be addressed? Oo, di ba? How do you want? Kasi it tells, you, you, you know, you are conveying to the parents that their name is important. Di ba? And that you're really building this relationship. And then, importante yun. Kailangan magtulungan kayo. Hindi yung kagaya nung dentista ni Francis talagang hinedlock siya. Wala nang pakaela. Bahala na yung magulang. <laughs> this is my clinic. Parang ganun yung nangyari eh. Kasi diba? kaibigan ng nanay ko eh. Ay, ay, isa pa ako. yun, di ba? So, ano ngayon na naisip ni Francis sa kanyang nanay? <laughs> Kung siya ba pala? O oh, sige. Yeah, maybe that is something that we can uh, add to our practice. We can ask the parents if it is okay to call them their first name, uh, their designation, mommy, and then their name, if they do not mind. Uh, mm-hmm. on, on our end, because we try to make the the experience as warm as possible so sometimes we call them mommy or as yeah. informal as possible so that they would feel at ease and warm up with us easily yeah. but that is the thing yeah. Mia, the, mm-hmm. the making them feel informal is actually your own thinking mm-hmm. by your own interpretation your and perception you, you are thinking if the parent is thinking the same way as you do so yes, yun yung yeah. video medyo na na ignore natin we just assume so, yeah. But anyway, it's uh, no, it's a work in practice. <laughs> in yeah. Progress, but well, work in progress. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. Sia. Yes. Uh, another question for Dr. Dimalanta. Uh, are there any medication contraindications, especially for children with Down syndrome, since they have uh, usually a uh, large tongue and periodontal conditions, uh, or which may lead to eventually breathing problems is there any medications that the the practitioner should be wary of i i would think if they had other comorbid medical conditions then there would be but as uh, a child with down syndrome per se kung wala namang allergies yeah. cough and all of that heart disease hindi naman pwede i, I saw a question there na natakot nga ako yung unang question about when to use your your mouthwash and everything and i think that that has to do big bigla ako nagpanic sa question and i think uh, it, it has to do with the the severity yata of the of the the disease that where you can use it diba? like the periodontal disease you use one for for surgery na and the other one for a lesser kind so in terms of the other oral medications that they take for as long as uh, there are no um, contraindications to the medication you're going to give because most of the time the medication you'll give will be and an, uh, what they call this to numb diba? Uh, anesthesia. Anesthesia. So I don't think there would be any unless there's a medical condition. 
All right. Thank you for that, Dr. Francis. Uh, regarding the mouthwashes, uh, maybe we can help you in answering those questions. There are three questions with regards to the mouthwashes. We will answer them later towards the end of the Q&A portion. Another question from one of our members of PPDSI is, what advice can we give parents for children with special health care needs when the child exhibits repetitive behavior that can actually become injurious to the child, such as lip biting, or putting Grinding. sharp things in the mouth, skin picking, head banging on the wall. Uh, how, how can we help in lessening or decreasing the tendencies for these self-injurious behaviors? Uh, how can we divert such behaviors to a much safer one? Harold, ako ba? Okay. the Royal Highness. <laughs> oh, sige. Ako ang, my answer to this is actually more questions. Diba? What is what is uh, making this child exhibit all of these behaviors? You know, so, you know, given the DevPeds kami ni Francis, you know, we need to really understand what is triggering these behaviors. Parang, is this really part, alam mo, may genetic problem yung bata. Is this really part of the phenotype, no genetic disorder? Or is there something else that is making the child uh, exhibit these behaviors? So, I think yun talaga yun, depende kasi talaga. And once we know the reason, then ma-address natin. So, hindi siya ganun kadaling sagutin na, and then ganitong sabihin mo, it's not that easy. So, Nor is it, it yeah. Diba? Nor is it like bibigyan mo ng gamot lang kasi nga oh. malikot and all. Because, you know, yeah. like tama ka, Harold, diba? as okay. you said, we have to find out why the child is being difficult and why he's exhibiting that behavior. Yeah. And like sometimes we don't even tell children, parents to stop the stereotypes of the, the mm -hmm. child because if it calms him down, let's just yeah. figure out why he's doing it, yeah. antecedent, behavior, and consequence. And then uh, it's easier said than done. Obviously, diba, when you're faced with the child, anong gagawin mo? Parang, Gusto mo nga sabihin, mami naman, sana inayos mo yan bago mo dinala dito kasi mahihirapan talaga kayo as dentist. Paano mo ihihiga? Di ba? Kung yung bata, puro steam. Oh. So, probably that, that should even be, maybe I should suggest, part of your pre-consult is your child exhibiting this so you know kung papatulugin mo na or hindi bago dumating yeah. para mas kalmado. So, I, I think talaga yun, yun yung sasabihin, you know, maybe you need to see uh, the beats Dr. Muna to Harold understand. C. John Harold C. <laughs> and Francis C. <laughs> doing the concerts. Okay. I know there's a very interesting question here, Francis. Uh, so again, which one did you I read? I have a patient. Mia, we'll go ahead now. We'll go ahead. Yeah, so you have it. a patient who, feel, uh, who you feel needs a deathbed intervention, but parents did not declare anything. So related to the second question, how do you tactfully tell a parent in denial? Yes. The child should see consult. Okay. So, ako, sumalaw, ako muna. Ikaw, ikaw muna, ikaw muna. Yeah. Ako yung, um, yung, yung, uh, since the, the dialogue or the script that I use, for example, no, is I point out behaviors. Oh, ma'am, alam niyo po, napansin ko po na uh, ganito, ganito yung behavior ni Harold, for example. So, ano po sa palagay ninyo? Di tatanungin mo ngayon. Tapos, ah, ganun po ba? O sige. Tapos, and then you will reflect, naku, dang hirap po siguro niyang alagaan na, no? Siguro pagod na pagod po kayo. So, medyo leading, but again, at the same time, empathic of the parent's experience of a problem behavior, for example. And then, sasabihin mo, so ma'am, alam niyo po, uh, alam po, sa tingin niyo po ba, mas maganda po ang buhay ninyo, for example, kung mawawala yung ugaling ito? I'm sure sasabihin niyo na magulang, oo, oo naman po, dok. O sige, so alam niyo po, makakatulong sa inyo kapag magpapatingin po kayo sa ganito. So I think makakatulong po kung ano if we get to understand bakit po siya ganito ganyan and then you know alam niyo po um, marami pong uh, ano to matutulong yung doktor na ganito sa ganyang ugali. So that is very tactful kasi parang you you, you try to really understand the parents uh, the family's lives, di ba? How they are living with the behavior and then magsasuggest ka na rin ng possible uh, solution. Kasi in that kind of conversation, meron silang way out eh. Yung pagkasabihin nila lang, oh, interested po ba kayo na ganito? Ah, hindi na, okay na ako, okay na ako. But then, sinimula mo na nga na, oh, ano ang hirap-hirap siguro, no? Tapos sabi nila, oo. Oh, oh. Doon, parang totoo na talaga na nahihirapan sila. Hindi sila mag-back out na, ay, hindi, hindi ako nahihirapan. Yeah, <laughs> so, and no, very much, hmm. that, and that's really a good way. And ako, maybe it's the same, how our GenPeds friends will tell us, paano ba kung ayaw ko in denial? Lalo na kung doktor, di ba? Yeah. So, ang lagi ko lang sinasabi, 
wag niyong i-diagnose. Yeah. Right. Diba? Ang lagi mo lang sasabihin, you know, I might be wrong, but I could see this in your child. And I think what Harold said is the best. You empathize first. Mm-hmm. And ako, ma- ma- my technique would always be, uh, please, uh, what are your concerns? Let's yeah. let, let let's find out wh- where your ch- what are your child's strengths and then what are areas of challenges. I don't even call them weaknesses. And then pag kunwari nakita ko na ang likot-likot ng bata, tapos ako sa palagay niyo po ba malikot yung bata? Naku, hindi dito lang ho yan sa clinic mo ganyan kalikot. So hindi ko ho kayo tutulungan about yung nakikita kong medyo parang malikot po siya. Ah, hindi, hindi, sige, sige, oh, Doc. Paano na? Di ba? So parang, you, like leading questions, like like Harold said, might bring it out kasi nga, they can't see it. Parang they refuse to see it, lalo na kung only child yan. Di ba? Only boy. Di ba? Or, or a youngest yeah. or eldest. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really matter birth order. But I think it's important for you, you will be remiss if you don't tell them that they should see. And I would always tell my co-pediatricians, genpeds, to, to start with the line that I might be wrong, but it would be nice if you saw Dr. John Harold Sia because <laughs> I have a direct that? line to him. He will see you within a week. Kasi di ba, magagalit sila. Ang tagal-tagal daw namin. Galit na sila sa amin lahat. Hindi naman namin fault. Eh lalo pa ngayon, may mental health issues pa. Akala nila, psychiatrist tayo. Di ba, Harold? So, in very much the same way, you will have to tell them, uh, I guess, not to pass judgment right away. And I've always... Uh, uh, what do you call this? Thought this that the most difficult child is the child that needs the more love yeah. and uh, understanding. And all of you, the 256 uh, pediatric <laughs> dentists listening to us now, para tayong meron night show, no? Baka dapat every year tayong dalawa talaga ang tandem dito. Magkasunod kami parate, eh, di ba? So, uh, I think it's, it's, it's nice to also hear you uh, and listen in on your lectures so that we will learn as well. Yes, uh, thank you for those. Uh, bagay nga po kayong dalawa to lecture together. <laughs> Pareho pa kami ng ano. <laughs> oh, hindi, nyo, hindi nyo kami binigyan ng headphone. Bumili kami para, para lang dito. Because that's how much you love PPDS. I yeah, definitely. <laughs> Cha-charge ko yan kay Dr. Abaya. Plaridel <laughs> Paul Abaya. Full name, di ba? Yes, but don't worry because Dr. Paul Abaya will be your pediatric <laughs> Now, another question. Uh, I, I believe that answer also applies to those uh, for parents who do not declare in the chart or in the history, yeah. mm-hmm. they do not declare any concerns such as those mentioned or a diagnosis of a learning disability, for example. Uh, maybe empathi- empathizing with them would also be applicable in opening up the concern of behavior ch- challenges. Tama po ba, Dr. Yes. Francis? Yeah. Pwede din po yun. You know, now, I, another... would, uh, Mia, I would like to add to that. No? Halimbawa, uh, hindi sinabi. So, paano nyo hasabihin ngayon? Diba? So, Siguro there will be some of you na nainis or nagalit kasi ano ba naman to? Ito lang 30 minutes to visit tapos hindi ko nagawa, di ba? So, you know, it's okay to be aware of your you know emotions too. But after that, you know, mag-isip ka na ulit. So, paano mo hasabihin sa magulang? So, ano yung line ko dyan? Sabihin ko, you know po, uh, Mrs., Mrs. Cruz, napansin ko po na si you know, sa visit natin, tarang, hindi po talaga siya mapirmi. Parang hindi po niya naiintindihan. You know, so parang mukhang hirap po talaga siya makaintindi ng mga you know, yung sinasabi ko, ganyan, etc. So you are just telling the parent what you see and what you observe. Diba? And then from, there, from, from that observation, di pa ito mo nasabihin na siguro po baka mas kailangan pa natin siyang kilalanin pa. Uh, at since hindi po ako yung specialista dyan, oh, yun. so ganoon na ulit yung, yung discussion. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a very nice way to start the conversation to the parents about it. Yeah. Oh, what about uh, what is your stand as, as pediatricians, especially, you know, specializing in children with special needs with the use of physical restraints or immobilizing equipments, uh, such equipments that we use in our dental practice, such as a papoose board or maybe a mouth guard, uh, a yeah, um, uh, uh, tooth pillow, for example, a mouth gag. Uh, for us, it is uh, often necessary if the children have uh, learning disabilities and we need to do invasive procedures for the first the safe uh, way of carrying out the treatment. But as pediatricians, what is your stand with these? Oh, Francis, you have this PTSD with dentists. 
<laughs> well, I think if it's if it's needed, you have to do it. I, I I wouldn't want my hands trapped in the mouth of a child. So you really need to put the guard. The papoose thing, we used to do it, tama Harold, but then now parang not anymore. But like, how do we even inject them with their vaccines if 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 ganon? Talagang kailangan restrain. So. I think it depends. It's a case-to-case -case basis. And uh, unless somebody finds a better way to do it, to get your work done, you may have to do such maneuvers. I have my thoughts on that. So I thought, you know, it's a very good question. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any studies showing na yung effects nung ganyan. Kasi ang goal niyo as dentist is to get the job done. Diba? Parang do whatever. But then on deep part of the child and the parents is the experience. And then idadagdag mo, oh, what about yung trust? So, kung gagawin mo ito, definitely, matatakot talaga sa'yo yung bata. Diba? Uh, and then, ma, sabihin natin non-verbal. Diba? Tapos, uh, in, talagang intellectually disabled. So, ang tatatak lang talaga sa bata is yung experience niya na tinali siya at mayroong pinunta sa kanyang bibig at ganito maliwanag. So, trauma talaga ang mangyayari. Uh, but then, you got the job done. So, ano ba ang gusto mo mangyari? Do you want this child and family to come back to you? Di ba? Para talaga maalagaan yung oral health care? Or, sige na, isang pasyente lang naman yan. Eh, tapusin na nga, bahala na. So, there's really a balance. Ako po, you know, wala tayong studies do sa mga ganong issues. But thinking as a mental health professional, developmental behavioral pediatrician, I would probably side on the child. No? Na, para bang, why should we, why should we let this child uh, endure the suffering so and the trauma. Pero, <laughs> when you can do it, huh? bukang, pero, uh, yeah, bukang, so when you, uh -huh. when you can do it naman, there are many other strategies. Of course, there are risks and benefits, diba? Now, sedation or mild sedation. So, there is no, uh, there's not one answer to this, eh. Pero, at the very end, yung nababagsak pa rin tayo do sa doctor-patient relationship. Diba? So, if you want this child to trust you, no, what is the least invasive and traumatic way <laughs> that you can do to mo. make a dental visit. <laughs> uh, at least a very, uh, an, uh, a neutral it's, experience at the least. It's to, it's, it's to sedate, which is the question of Dr. Manalastas, na mm. is sedation advisable to patients with intellectual disability in doing a simple extraction? Because along the lines of what you said, nga, Harold, it's the trust. But I'm even wanting to ask the, doc, the dentists here, uh, ilan sa mga patients yung um, umuwing luhaan. Yeah. Diba? Kasi talagang, talagang namang masakit at talagang nakakatakot ang dentist. So, you, you may have mastered. <laughs> hindi naman nakakatakot lahat ng dentist. Hindi. Ikaw kasi, ikaw, ikaw ba hindi ka, hindi ka natakot sa dentist mo? Oh, Siguro hindi. batok ka. Oh. What, I mean, what I mean is like, diba? parang uh, you have mastered that art and I think you wouldn't even go to pediatric dentistry if you didn't have the patience, if you didn't have the nurturing way, the caring way, kaya nga, di ba, talagang, call it na, I'm putting you high up on a pedestal, but like, it's, it's very noble of you to go into something that's so difficult. And I don't think you'll get into this profession if you didn't have the heart for it. O, yan. Tama, the heart. Oh, nga. Oh, alam mo, Mia, I just had a thought. No, this is a very good research topic. So for mm -hmm. those who are dental students here or pediatric residents man i mean time the francis it's actually a very good uh, no, research topic na because ano ba no one has researched yeah oh yeah so at least on to my knowledge i'm tagal na akong ano eh yun lang sige na besides swipe tayo <laughs> That is a shout out to the residents of the advanced education in pediatric dentistry who are listening with us right now that would be a nice research topic. Yeah. Uh, take note yeah. of those. <laughs> yung mga napag-usapan natin tonight. And I think we can deduce that Dr. Dimalata actually had severe caries when he was young. Kasi no! Very strong <laughs> siya. No, I didn't probably, have caries. My timing invasive procedures ang ginawa kay Dr. Francis. No, it was a simple cleaning. <laughs> my, my dentist will tell you, nagulat siya sa tanda ko daw na to, totoo pa daw lahat ng iping ko. But it's stained because of my vitamins that I had to take. So, hindi ko siya, hindi ko siya ma mapapute. O, di ba? Kaya na, kaya, hindi ka gaya ni Dr. John Harold Sia. Ngiti na ngiti dyan para siya merong toothpaste commercial. O. Yes, anyway. Um, <laughs> yes. And we would also like to add na tama naman po, as you have said, that 
you know, weighing between the patient dentist relationship and the need to do the dental procedure, as we have mentioned earlier, it depends also on the need. Eh? How painful is it? How much is the quality of life affected? If it is very painful already, sometimes we have to do the procedure first, and maybe it may require restraints or uh, those equipments that will keep the child safe to carry out the procedure. And then we build the trust afterwards. Right? Uh, sometimes the dentist will, may have to resort to this and then work on the uh, building of trust in the rapport afterwards. Sometimes we need that. With regards to rewarding, uh, sometimes we, we have noticed some, some parents want to reward their child after a dental visit. But how do we how do we talk or educate the parents if the reward actually sounds like a bribe already? Like tinatanong at sinasabi na nila na uh, o oh, bibili tayo ng cars mamaya after ng after ng ninis mo dali humiga ka na humiga ka na. Uh, sometimes it may sound like a bribe from the parent. Is that is that okay or should we speak up to the parent? You do it. Oh, Alternate, di ba? Ito ang So let's define first, what is a reward? What is a bribe? Bribe, okay. Ba? Ang reward kasi, you state the behavior first to the child. Parang you set up the condition. Sabi mo, oh, Harold, da, pupunta tayo kay, you know, Dr. Abaya ngayon, titignan niya ang ngipin. So ang gusto kong gawin mo, upo ka doon ng tahimik, makikinig ka sa sabihin niya. Kapag ginawa mo lahat yon, then, bibilang kita ng whatever. That is a reward. What is a bribe? Alam mo, pumunta na ka na yung ngayon. O, Harold, pumunta na kay Dr. Abaya ngayon. Tahimik yung bata. Tapos pagdating doon, Mami, ayoko na dito. Takot, takot, takot. Sige na, magpo ka na dyan. Pag magpo ka dyan, bibilang kita ng ganito. That is a bribe. Kasi nauna na yung misbehavior. Diba? So, kailangan you set up the condition first. Kaya dito importante yung communication ninyo with the parents before the first visit. Diba? Parang mag-tandem kayo, magtulungan talaga kayo. Uh, para ito yung plano ninyo, you're all on the same page. Para, you know, hindi nyo isasabotage ang isa't isa. Diba? So, pero once na, kasi pag nagawa na yun, anyway, parang no matter what you say, wala na eh. It's really the parent, parang yung mas importante pa rin talaga kung ano man yung sasabihin ng parent sa bata versus kung ano yung sasabihin ng non-parent. So, yun. Mag-usap, kailangan nyo talaga mag-usap. Yes, and I think you, you've, you've been able to distinguish the difference between both. And really, it's, it's better to catch them doing a good behavior, yeah. rewarding them for that, yeah. than bribing them because they'll always look for the bribe. Yeah. Right? And what, what we, I always also tell them, uh, if you do this, then this will happen. Uh, something like, hindi naman panakot. Diba? Kasi nga, usually ang panakot sa amin, sige, iniksyon ka ng doktor. Sige, dalhin kita sa dentista. Hindi. Diba parang, if you do this, yeah. then probably we can talk about this. So parang siya na mag -iisip. But if you don't do it, then I don't think I can give you this. Parang the choice is the child's. Lalo na kung older child. Mas mahirap kasi pag mas bata eh. Yeah. Yes, I'm okay. Thank you for that. Uh, and since bumababa na po ang blood sugar ni Dr. Francis, <laughs> I think we have to more or less uh, cap this session right now. Yung yes, so, uh, yung you last one, sabi mo lang yung ano getting to know you stage by telemed. The answer is yes. Yes, definitely. Lang naman yun eh. I think it's a very 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 good idea. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. through tele telemedicine and probably online or pictures. Yes, okay. free screening them through the phone or maybe a social media platform such as Facebook yeah. Messenger and Viber. Tama po ba? Yes, we can we can tap those platforms po. And thank you for such an entertaining question and answer <laughs> question. Na, uh, we, I actually call this the Sia and the Malanta talk show. <laughs> uh, we have made Francis the and Harold <laughs> <na lang. laughs> Yes. Oh, pwede din po. <laughs> Francis and Harold talk show. Uh, thank you very much for making this very entertaining and lively. I believe our participants really not only entertain, but really learn a lot from this session tonight. 